A rally-ready Lamborghini, you say? Well, surely that's going to be some sort of Dakar spec Urus. Nah, it's way better than that. Say hello to the Lamborghini Huracan Storato. Now, we like Huracans here at Top Gear. They have the looks, they have the handling, and they have the noise. But what they don't have, despite most of them being four-wheel drive, is the ability to drive down a really bumpy back road at speed. Until now. Because the Lamborghini Huracan Storato is a special stage Lamborghini that is, in my humble opinion, just about perfect. The Storato is a car that Lamborghini says will be its easiest and most forgiving car to drive on low-grip surfaces. It references gravel and bumps quite a lot. And the quickest Lamborghini of all on a bumpy back road a rally-style supercar, you have my complete attention. So what on earth have we actually got? Now, when I heard that Lamborghini was cooking up a special off-road version of one of its cars, I did assume that it meant its SUV, the Urus. But then it turned out they were actually playing with the venerable Huracan, a car that's been around since 2014. Uh, hence the slew of special editions, as it grows old absolutely disgracefully. But the good bits of the Huracan remain for the Storato, which means dirt road in Italian, by the way. So, what we have here is a 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10 engine that pumps out 600 brake horsepower and redlines at 8,700 RPM, and also has 413 pounds-feet of torque. Now, to me, that sounds very much like the same engine that's in the Huracan rear-wheel drive, so it's a fairly easy state of tune for this motor. Lamborghini does say that it has a specific engine calibration for the Storato, which I kind of assume just allows it to do what it does, which is beat it to hell without it puking its valves all over the roadway. Bolted to the back of that, you get the usual seven-speed dual-clutch transmission and Haldex Gen 5 four-wheel drive, which all works very well in the standard car. Now, Lamborghini hasn't actually announced any performance figures for the Storato as yet, but seeing as the least fast Huracan gets from zero to 62 miles an hour in just over three seconds and does more than 200 miles an hour, I think it's safe to say that this will probably do zero to 62 in about three and a half and more than 180, which, let's face it, is probably enough. So, the Storato is still really obviously a Huracan, but it's kind of an outdoorsy, rugged version that knows how to make a campfire out of three twigs and a flint. If we start at the front, it's got driving lights and a redesigned front bumper, and side sills and a rear bumper that are all reinforced so that if you're clipping an apex, they won't get torn off like wet tissue paper. Then you've got a wider track with extended wheel arches, both front and back, roof bars, and this rather fetching snorkel, which keeps the engine fed with cold, clean air. Now, while that will help if you hit a water splash, it does not mean that you can use the Storato as a submarine. At least I don't think so. But outright oomph really isn't the point of the Storato. It's supposed to have a much broader spread of abilities than the standard car, and a lot of that is to do with suspension. If you want your Storato to do this, then it's going to have much more travel than usual. So, there's these big wheel arch extensions that cover a track that's wider by 30 millimeters at the front and 34 millimeters at the back. But of more importance is a 44 millimeter increase in ride height. Now, I know that doesn't sound like much, but if you consider that the hydraulic nose lift on a standard car that raises it up so you can get over speed bumps is only 40 millimeters, that's gonna make quite a big difference. So the wheels, are actually quite small for a Lamborghini at 19 inches, but they come equipped with a much taller and very specific off-road tyre. But the interesting thing here is that these wheels and tyres have much more space to move because axle travel is up by 25% on the front axle and 35% on the back. So this car should go down a rough road much more easily. So what's it like on the inside? Well, the interior tends towards Hurricane, unsurprisingly. There's a permanent four-wheel drive system and a dedicated setup for the LDVI. That translates as Lamborghini Integrated Vehicle Dynamics, so you also get specific driving modes for the Anima, in this case Strada, Sport and Rally. 
The best bit of the setup is that Lamborghini actually mentions balanced oversteer for fun to drive characteristics, so I'm assuming that the Huracan's natural rear bias should be present and correct in rally mode. It certainly appears so in the videos of the prototypes hooning around with mountain bikers. And the Storato isn't the only mutant sports off-roader to hit the market. Porsche has recently unveiled the 911 Dakar to a rapturous reception and quite a few orders. Which means that we may be entering the age of the off-road supercar. Can't wait for the group test. Or just the keys.